so it's our immense pleasure to invite our honorable chief guest dr n k sindamarekan an ips sir and uh, thank you sir for coming to the institute and uh, he is known for his philanthropic activities in public services and also he is known for his uh, activities in public services as administrator to give a brief introduction about sir which is not possible because of his achievement across various fields sir started his career as assistant professor then in the year of 1989 got selected into indian police services he also got trained in london and scotland yard police he is popularly known for operation cocoon as a common man we knew about this operation regarding veerappan sir is the brain behind it and this operation is considered to be the case study for a lot of police academies across the state and intelligence agencies and sir is also known for his encouraging youth for public services it's a immense pleasure sir we thank you to come and share your experiences sir thank you very good afternoon <clears throat> first of all i want you to be free don't have a feeling that you are attending a class uh, because i was a lecture i know how would be sitting in a class in afternoon hours still make it lively that's what so learning is a process where you learn from me i learn from you so make it uh, two way and um, this can be a more of a discussion more of a discussion than a one way traffic my topic was uh, left to my choice but um, for the limited time i want to take some topic which is having some relevance with the governance so you are all here for a higher uh, position and uh, governance is very important that is what the that is the reason why we have the toughest examination in the country because india is a, such a diversified and a very heterogeneous group where the culture ethnicity religion everything is different in different states and there is no single formula for governance you cannot govern kashmir as you govern tamil nadu you cannot govern uh, delhi as you govern chennai because there is there is no single formula everything is customized so what required what is required of an administrator like you as a public service it is not like passing examination alone you come here with the mindset that if you pass examination and become a administrator then it will be easy for you no the moment you start preparing for a civil service you should have the feeling that you are a you are tailor made for a governance post not that a plan a plan b is there but still you should always think about the issues before you not from the book point of view but for your your point of view say for example there is a issue in the paper just by reading it taking notes this may come for examination this is short notes let me prepare it for notes that is okay technically okay but you should apply your mind analyze the problem have your own thought about it 
any issue for example you have a this prohibition issue there was a loss of life you have all the facts but that is not important what is important is what is your perception about it so for every issue which you face in the life or which you see in the books you study you should have your own perceptions unless you have that leadership quality even if you become an ias also will fail so getting into ias is just a first step getting into ips or to civil service is the first step but surviving is different don't think every person has become ias also living a uh, what you call the raja life no it can be hell for you so it is not that it's better process taking that will got all the benefits like going in a room a revolving car getting lot of servers around you and people are getting a salute no that's all immaterial it's a basic service where you have to be very very it's very tense job it's very serious job and it is very very changing environment one one solution for a problem for a similar problem it may not work you cannot adopt the formula of us that you have to customize so why i have taken this northeast and uh, uh, external interference is northeast administration is entirely different it is different from all other states suppose i take tamil nadu or take andhra or karnataka the problems are all within the internal level where there is no external uh, contributions you can control it's a controlled uh, environment where you can give a solution which are all tailor made is available but uh, uh, north east is a very peculiar uh, uh, group of states which is very very difficult to manage it has got empty number of problems culturally sociologically politically uh, to make the situation worse it is highly being polluted by the external agencies or the other countries nowhere in the world you have such a uh, interference from other countries trying to destabilize the country destabilize the state and to make the people uh, the, the this the governance weaker so here the role of policy is very difficult for example take case of manipur manipur it is not governed by police or an ias officer it is a governance consisting of crpf your assam rifles paramilitary force commando force cobra ias officers ministry of uh, home affairs and your local police uh, indian police service officers also it's a it's a type of a amalgamation of so many agencies trying to solve the problem which is of so complex nature so what is the problem why we are not able to get into services so easily reason is we do not concentrate on the concept of the kanade the issue to understanding the issue is very important not only for examination for governance also that is why we fail in examinations to give a very very clear example suppose you see a movie a very popular movie say even your indian is coming or indian 2 is there or whatever so some popular movie just like by many people you see the movie for 3 hours or 2 and 1/2 hours any movie you like as soon as the movie is over you have taken to a hall given a mcq question paper of 100 questions about the incident based on that movie what will happen without preparation also you will write all the things correctly and most of you will get 90% mark is it not why because you understood the movie well any part of it anywhere you ask you will be able to tell but here the question is if you know about the issues fully not by like you know narrow mindedly you should understand why why it has happened what's the basis behind it for example you take the case of manipur what happened why manipur is hot where is the history you have to trace back to 1913s 
read the history britishers right from britishers what has happened how the tribes have been manipulated exploited from there if you trace the story and go up to the uh, first then you get the complete understanding for which anybody asking you any questions you can answer because you have the depth of knowledge that's why your current affairs paper is very important what you do in current papers current affairs people say you read the newspaper now current affairs is not based on newspaper alone current affairs is based on the basis also if any particular issue is being thrown out for example today there was a news on nepal hey paper there was a, the prime minister was or pachendra what is his name ha huh? pachendra 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 okay why he was thrown out today to read the news write the notes that nepal lady ki uh, the person has been removed and they are going to choose an other so what is nepal congress what is communist party of uh, nepal what is uml what is marxist leninist what is leninist what is marxist who was before why he has adopted a policy of printing a uh, indian uh, continent uh, indian places in his currency why he has a marxist tendency who has a backing for him and why is he removed now what was the vote percentage and what was the nine years of history of the nepal and what is the relationship of nepal with india and how far it is security uh, strategically important to india this every fact of it has to come to your mind then you will enjoy the news why people don't read newspaper is because they do not understand the story it is like seeing movie from the middle so any issue given in the paper if you know the background you will enjoy it as a serial movie ah uh, this is what happened last year this is what happened previous year ca for example ca also if you don't know what is the background of ca right from the historic days then you cannot understand why ca is important whether it is right or wrong to support it or not even in a group discussion somebody asks you to give an opinion about you unless you know the pros and cons of the entire uh, argument you cannot give your opinion so that is what current affairs means studying the entirety of the issue each issue by issue that is why you have to have a systematic understanding of the concept everyone can learn everyone can mug up then where people uh, try to make a difference only in their understanding and that is what the upsc wants the how for able to perceive in concept understand the concept trying to deliver your opinion how you perceive what is your uh, what is your balance or uh, judgment on that that is what is being made not on the memory capacity everyone has memory capacity 2 plus 2 for everyone right so then you say i have written well but i am not able to get through the long essay type questions essay essay type questions are mainly made to understand your under, to, to, to know about your comprehensive thinking level it is not found in books it is not found in notes it is found in your understanding alone so please keep this as a mind this is what uh, since i was a panel in many interviews in uh, higher postings i know what we expect from the students leadership qualities so now to give a brief a briefing this is not a class is just i am trying to give you a bird eye view about the northeast and uh, how the china and uh, myanmar uh, bangladesh are affecting the uh, the the development or the or the, the struggle going on in these places so here formation let us see just as i told you go to the basics you may know it you may not know but you do know the basics what is northeast how it was formed simple question starts with the basic i don't say that you don't know you may have done it you would have studied it you would have written examinations right but still whenever i start you go to the basics so here i see before 1963 again it is after independence also 
you have got assam the entire of north east consisting of eight uh, states now of which seven is called the seven sisters and one sikkim is also from the north east but it has got no relevance to the the problems which are associated with this seven states so we do not touch up sikkim sikkim is other side of bhutan so there we don't touch it we are more concerned with the seven states so how was this seven state formed simple as a story i tell you it was just in assam the entire place was called assam and you got princely states of manipur and tripura and they had you know that you have studied the politics in the history also so all these uh, subjects you study in history political science or uh, public administration uh, every time there is a cross crossing of events there you have studied about how the kashmir was formed what was the 543 princely states when the partition took place where how this uh, annexure took place for all the 543 states join and how many did not join yeah like your hyderabad did not join pakistan uh, uh, your kashmir did not join hari singh was not willing to join with india yeah hyderabad was not willing to join with india so many other places also reluctant to join with india slowly they were all brought together by vallabhai patel was a man one and the menon did an excellent job in uh, grouping the india to one particular one nation and in that we got they were ruled by different rulers like manipur Uh, separate kings are ruling that so what happened this assam was like this till 1963 then you have got the first uh, factor is nagaland came into existence which was separated from assam then the, after the assam formation of nagaland 1963 you got three more uh, states came into formation meghalaya tripura and manipur this was the already existing tripura became a state manipur became a state meghalaya were carved out of assam so this was the formation of the three more or nagaland was already existing these three came into existence here is also very important you have to remember the years then you have the sikkim in 1975 separate formed into a state then you have got arunachal pradesh and mizoram carved out of again assam and arunachal pradesh separately has come uh, in the year 1987 now here i would like to tell you that in the civil service examination very important point is you should know the mapping of each state very clearly there is no shortcut you have to remember each map whenever i say you have to say somebody wakes you how is mizoram it looks like a duck yes so it is like this so something you may imagine assam it looks like a flying eagle remember just whatever you can imagine to be a figure you remember that so where is our suppose they want you to place the diagram of northeast you should able to scribble in your uh, sketch not very artistically but at least tentatively show that you know the uh, the exact locations so you should say arunachal pradesh is here assam meghalaya this side then you have manipur this side nagaland then here you got uh, myanmar that you got a uh, bangladesh there you got uh, this side you got a uh, china border so this and all you should able to visualize so mapping is very important you should uh, draw 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 and find out mapping not not only these states but also if you are asked to study about the left wing image uh, extremism those also you should be able to draw the uh, map of each state and then further uh, extend it to the countries so almost fairly of all the countries you should be able to have the idea of their uh, geographical locations longitude latitude which hemisphere they are or you are able to see the globe i hope everyone has a globe in your place go on rotating in daily and see it so that you will remember again then this is a holistic picture see what is which side this are all important because when you write your test when you write your uh, uh, essay you should be able to visualize what is where so myanmar is a site you got fine myanmar is always called as burma then you got china has got uh, the region then you got bhutan Bhutan and uh, it's at, uh, between Nepal and Bhutan, you got a uh, Sikkim. Then you got uh, Bangladesh at the bottom. The problem is the entire uh, this northeast agencies, uh, northeast uh, uh, states uh, have Myanmar, China, Bhutan, somewhat Nepal, Bangladesh, all uh, landlocked. 
so every other country is trying to influence exert influence on the functioning of this so they have got a very critical situation that we have to fight not only the the inter tribal rivalry of each states but also the uh, tribes fighting the government and also the government fighting the external uh, problems so it's a, a tri party a tri uh, what you call uh, triangular uh, what you call uh, solutions required then you have what are the dimensions simply some of the major facts of northeast regions well, you can just read it it is not a very dense forest highly terrain 98% 97% is forest highly um, uh, terrain is very difficult to uh, go through and you have got uh, 220 tribal communities it is not a correct figure they mean more or less just imagine there are a lot of tribal communities and there is always a tribal conflict plus the tribal conflict with the government they fight with the government and they fight with themselves this is their nature then you have got insurgency external support by other countries then you have got your uh, culture is mix of tibetan south east and east indian that's one typical thing all these north eastern people you find their facial structure the mongolia race uh, tibetan race south east uh, compared to the myanmar compared to china compared to nepal bhutan everything looks alike tibet so they have got some facial resemblance somebody if i in north east you can identify yes he is from north east he is from manipur he is from mizoram why because they are the race is such a, so that's one reason why they all think that we are all to the same race it is understood that in 13th century or 14th uh, earlier they all migrated to china that is what is theory is there is no hard and fast rule so they look alike so this is one peculiar thing where you are able to have a difference of face looking at them you can tell suppose you take, uh, look at the telugu fellow a karnataka fellow or tamil fellow we cannot differentiate malayali to the extent we cannot differentiate little fairer than tamil people you be also be also can differentiate sardarji of course you can tell because they have got a different identity so somewhat we able to say they belong to this here up or urissa we can tell but these people extensively, extensively you can say yes he is the northeast only so this is one then you have got uh, mizoram menopa and uh, mizoram tripura the highest literacy rate how being a tribal area this two is i just wanted to mention it because these all were all under the control of uh, britishers so they wanted to bring in christianity and christianity grew so high that mizoram and tripura became the highest uh, literacy rates uh, like kerala so why how, why english flourished because of the induct of christian all the tribals became christians that is one uh, historical um, findings we have to inculcate to remember that then you have got samis and bengali generally spoken in these areas then you got northeast control the entire development of these agencies are done by the northeastern council that is called the nec which was established in 1971 these are all smaller facts when you read about uh, uh, internal security northeast uh, problems this will come but still as you know assam rifles is an alternative uh, is the army is just uh, dominating in uh, these areas we are paramilitary force or more or like an army and very typical uh, distinction is all these northeast indian states are uh, army people are from the same states you cannot have tamilian becoming an northeast uh, army fellow or assam rifles no the condition qualification is they have to be from the native So that is one distinct feature of northeast then you got this is got 76 uh, 7.6% land 3.5% area this of course all statistics 90% of northeast border is ah, this is very important 90% of the northeast border has got to the china myanmar bhutan nepal of course is there so this is very important this is the reason why we have got so much of porous borders very easily you found in cross you cannot fence this place is so much of course bangladesh 4000 km is we fence but myanmar side we are not fence so it is not possible to fence these areas that is one reason it is difficult to have a tight control on the insurgency operations 
So it is connected to the Indian main land through chicken neck corridor, the silica uh, siliguri corridor they call it. Chicken neck corridor is when you speak about the earth is you have to remember about chicken neck corridor. You might have heard about it. It's a small nothing. Chicken is there, not goat is there. There is a chicken neck corridor because I was also wondering why they call chicken neck. Why they call goat neck? And chicken neck because it looks like chicken. I thought no, it doesn't look like chicken. Then uh, they said it is a small passage through which you can go to North East, and that is the only passage having around 21 kilometers or 40 kilometers or the dimension, small stretch through which the India is connected to this North Eastern place. And once this particular chicken neck called is squashed, killed, then your entire North East is cut off, and it is very strategically important. From uh, defense point of view, you cannot you cannot afford to uh, lose this point. So it is a highly guarded place, Chicken Neck Corridor, and they got Siliguri also. So uh, it is based on where it is placed. Again, you know where it is placed. This is the place. Shortly here, you got Bangladesh here, Bhutan, and Nepal. All the three are nearby. A small stitch can extend it. Here is a small stitch which has connected to the northeast regions. So oh, this is the chicken neck. I thought somebody drew this. I got it from notes. It because it looks like a chicken. That's why they call chicken neck. It may not be true, but for remembering, it's okay. Okay. Then uh, it contributes uh, major. Uh, what is the speciality of northeast? It is a highly flora and fauna is very high. It's very um, highly fertile. A lot of uh, you got a river. Uh, river. Uh, uh, flow in area, Dharmaputra is that. You have got uh, the uh, world's wettest place in northeast regions, and uh, some rifles is a parametric force. And a lot of other uh, um, natural resources are there, and it becomes strategically important from that uh, resources point of view also. Then you have, despite so much of positivity of northeast, is largely known for its militancy. So that is what is our concern about governance. Why we are bothered about governance? Because it is highly disturbed. Why it is disturbed is important. So here you have the pre-independence area, the North East people exploitation of natural resources. Uh, Britishers, when they ruled, they never thought that North East is considered to be a country or a part of uh, India. No. They just wanted to export the natural resources. And so they used as a, as a type of uh, a region where they can put labors, uh, collect all the raw materials, uh, agriculture products, and take it back to their place for their benefit. So they just uh, even Arunachal Pradesh was known as um, not just, it was not governed. It was called Northeastern Frontier Regions (NEFA). So it was not governed at all. So here, they, what uh, British uh, wanted to have in uh, insecurities, so what they did, they started supporting the tribals and created a divided policy among the plains and hill people so that they can survive. So there was not any importance given to the development of these regions, and that is why it remained fairly underdeveloped uh, during the pre-independence period. During partition, again, what happened? When, this was the main reason. Whenever they drew the line for Assam, for Nagaland, for other places, they drew the line, they drew the borders without consulting the local people. That was the biggest mistake, and that is the reason, you know. The tribal people got uh, divided, particularly the hilly tribes, the Naga tribes. Naga land has a problem because of this wrong divisions. So this cutting across Myanmar, cutting across different please, uh, so they, they are, their relatives are that village, uh, they are living in this village, they are cut across, creating a border. That created a problem. So no consultation was done for creating these borders. And that is the reason for the uh, this uh, state of affairs, what we have today. And after independence also, post-independence, it was far from Delhi. And even now they think that it's far. It is, it is in a very remote corner. So the amount of uh, attention given by the center, it was, it was thought to be that not much attention is given to Northeast agencies, Northeast regions. So that is a one of the criticisms against the center that you are not paying attention to our 
uh, northeast regions so that is also reason which cost now other causes historical mainly southeast and because they are more aligned as to the face the culture everything is aligned to the other side of the um, your uh, china and the other places so they think that they are more aligned to those uh, races rather than aligned to the dravidian races or the aryan races so then we have got uh, political governance issue this is also very important see of the total 25 parliamentary seats uh, only seven of seven states has got only 25 seats 545 or so we have got only seven seats representation so low representation is one of the um, demands they have been making so far that we are not being given proper representation in the member of parliament so that is one thing and due to distance to center counter insurgency operations are not taking place correctly and it is very difficult to do counter insurgency operations also despite the half of the military half of the parliamentary votes is entirely devoted for mining this northeast regions it is very difficult region so they are able to manage with the presence of army alone only the police has got a secondary role the ig dig or assist the army not the army assisting the local administration so here the army plays a very dominant role again lack of roads under development geographical extreme weather conditions this one is important that i am telling about is your uh, uh, 4500 km border is think about 4000 km the border it is not easy to control it so we got porous borders because of the porous borders we got illegal migration very easily people cross there's nothing like a uh, gate or a fence just walk through uh, that a place you are entering into other region so there is no demarcation of boundaries so you have got uh, proximity to golden triangle easy access to drugs uh, you have got golden triangle means you have the, your La- laos uh, thailand and your myanmar are the uh, golden triangle for drug uh, transportation for drug marketing we start from this place there is one more uh, crescent triangle golden crescent in the uh, upper region uh, that is uh, based on your uh, iran afghanistan and uh, one more region what is that pakistan they are the crescent but these you will study only in books but that is not true there are so many triangles so maybe for a book they'll write but i know it comes to so many areas it goes to sri lanka there is again a big hub in sri lanka also so we just for our study of understanding we say they got two triangles there are a lot of circles so leave alone that is all um, out of uh, your uh, focus then prevalence of inner line permit system this is very peculiar to the northeast what is inner line permit system a simple term if you want to leave madurai uh, chennai and go to madurai you have to buy a permit If you want to buy a house or go out for work in Madurai, then you have to get a permit. If you want to stay there, you have to get a permit. So that is like the locals cannot move out. For for example, if you go to Leh, Ladakh area, I want to say that you like you have an inner line permit. That is like you know, that is created Britishers to keep people separated. In Manipur, is also demand for inner line permit. There you cannot enter and stay just like that. They will ask for a permit. permit card is required like a visa to enter your own country so that is uh, one uh, uh, peculiar thing we find Now, why we have the problems there is either is autonomy they want autonomy every state want to autonomy north east all the seven want to have a independent country or independent uh, governance that is their main demand everywhere then you have got economic concession lot of concession they are demanding thousands of crores for our development they want thirdly they want political representation in the assembly uh, parliament and independence from india mostly they want independence from india mizoram wanted to have independence nagaland wants to have independence so they don't want to be associated with there is no patriotism there they say india is different we are different even today to go to nagaland they have say we are not indians there are a lot of movies on this in fact there was a movie from meghalaya i think ek anek ank Oh, you find the the way they live. You please look look at the movie. A N K. What is that? Ane ka ane kya? Just it, it shows a glimpse of how they live. So similarly, you have got uh, starting with uh, the, the different states. I'll briefly because very big story. I cannot go and explain it. I want to give more time for you to uh, interact. 
Assam, you see, when Assam was there, um, it was, uh, you can trace from Ahoms. Ahoms was a kingdom. What happens briefly, I will tell you. I got a lot of strides on this. It goes on, goes on. The, the Ahom kingdom was there. And you have one own Manipur kingdom was there. This fellow, what they did, they were attacked by rebellions. When the rebellions attacked there, they gave to uh, Britishers, please help me to uh, get out of the rebellions. One day, your, uh, what is that? Um, uh, Britishers say, okay, I'll help you. So, they guarded them. Again, one more rebellion came. Again, the Burmese people came inside. You know, Burma is a very naughty people. They came and uh, attacked uh, uh, this fellow, Assam, people, and the uh, yeah, again, Kapatha, help us. So, yeah, you are always coming away. You don't think, yeah, I will Kapatha you, but you give me money. So, he says, hey, you pay royalty, I will uh, save you. These fellows did not give, have money to give. So, say, oh, yeah, I cannot give money. So, Appa, you bring him part of me. I will take care of you. So, in that way, to the next. So, that way only, Assam was formed. The home criminals don't know we are, oh, I am protecting you. Uh, so, the uh, Burma was all hey, if you come again, this is my territory. If you come here again, I will shoot you. So, British was strong in the World War II. So, he said, uh, uh, the Treaty of Yandabu is very famous. If you read Yandabu, it is a big book on that. So, they said, uh, Burma said, no, sir, we will not come. Peace, uh, spare us. There, Burma uh, got separated and uh, they gave protection. Because of the protection, Azam was formed. And slowly, this uh, Britishers, what they did, they annexed all the northeastern regions and used them for uh, getting raw materials from these places. But not for uh, worrying, worrying about their development activities. So, this was the story. If you go on writing, it will be a very big story. I don't want to waste time on that. The historical background goes on. And what happened? Uh, Assam, uh, slightly what happened? The Assam got it, uh, people started agitating the Britishers. Because Britishers tried to bring in other people from other states and to work for them. This uh, the Assamis did not like. And they made Bengali as the official language. This got agitated. And they made some uh, hierarchy in the uh, elections. And this got the local people. All India, Assam uh, students, Ghana uh, Parishad. And they all started agitating. Look, we don't want to be part of you. We want Assam for Assamis only. We want all the fellows who come inside should be sent out. This was the first representation. Based on that, what happened? Assam, backed by your uh, uh, pro assamis people, they formed Ulfa, United Liberation Front of Assam. Ulfa again became military group later on. These are all big stories. But please, I am skipping you with continuity that Ulfa was a military organization to fight and uh, they, they, their only demand was Assam is for Assam is for. Others get out. So, there it forms in 1979 and they, they started training. That is where I want to point out. Is Myanmar, China, Pakistan says, aha, you are a militant against India. I will help you. So, they supplied weapons, they, served, they gave training and they were sent into India to fight against the government, to fight against the Britishers that time. So, that is how the seeds of Militancy grew in Assam. So, Ulfa became a very powerful lobby and there were four big uh, rowdies who came up uh, uh, very, very famous. Out of that, one Paul Kova, that they call Rajkova. So, the Aravinda Pazda, Rajkova, and this Parish Barua, the two culprits. They are the dangerous people. This Paul Kova, what he did, he started, a, uh, why even it's easy to remember, in the right examination, Rajkova, Paul Kova, Nyawara. So, this fellow sided with the government. Parish Baru did not sign. He didn't get money much. So, he said, no, no, I will not, uh, I will fight with the government. So, these two factions were formed in the Ulfa. Then, they are, uh, all, they are, these are all uh, other fellows fighting for Assam cause. Uh, Gana Raparishad, uh, foreigners entered. Then, they say, what do you want? They said, all the foreigners who entered uh, Assam should leave us. So, that was the demand. And because of this lot of fightings with the, the, the government and all, they, uh, they had a, what you call the Assam Accord. That was in 1985. Assam Accord is the first uh, milestone in which they said that those who are immigrants who come from uh, 1971 should be declared illegal. And those who have come before 66 will give citizenship. And those who have uh, come between 66 and 77 should be given uh, 10 years of uh, the, what you call, not allowed to vote 10 years. This was the 
asam accord now when you study this your mind should go to where you should go to the ca why because ca they say that citizenship will given to those who entered into india from april 31 1974 right now that is contradicted the asam accord so they went to court again no no ca cannot be applied because your uh, uh, year of reference is different from what we have been agreed 1985 so that again ca ek connection par gaya engar dinga varu this is correct so here this was agreed upon and what happened um, they started a wolf of fight uh, became weaker uh, bhutan cooperated uh, bangladesh cooperated and wolf of fight was banned under uap in you know, arms act la ban manta it was completely banned then armed force this is very dangerous act if i don't like uh, him i will put him under apsa because i need not question anybody i need not give reason i did not go to take uh, jet uh, put him and remand him shoot him also no no question that was the extraordinary power which was given to the armed forces that is armed forces special powers act of apsa this apsa is there in jammu kashmir manipur it's in uh, most of the uh, asian region uh, north eastern region also but there is lot of criticism against the army apsa act because it is able to um, what do you call extra, uh, kill people or torture them uh, because it is they have got the power so that is you know like a dictatorship so this is one of the allegations against the army that they are misusing the apsa act it was good in some sense but it is very very dangerous because according to wilson francis they can use his act the judiciary was very against this a lot of cases going on again of sars uh, power act and still they have reduced their uh, power now but still it is powerful and uh, ulfa group uh, they got pro group then uh, they they parish bro got expelled that fellow and uh, he became a separate entity and he started his own group anti group uh, was named as the alpha independent uh, alpha i they got ulfa <coughs> the alpha was there in 2011 the government into uh, made an agreement and in the agreement i said told you the palco made an agreement with the government so he had a, a port of action he is known as port of action baruwa was against so it's called anti tax motion so he signed with the government agreed to the government he did not agree with the government that is the reason then what happened a reason for think uh, conflict is because yes they have got a reason also see what happened Uh, the muslim population which was less in number uh, that is those who are assami speaking muslims mughal speaking they were uh, quite uh, normal and it was uh, agreeable slowly what happened this uh, muslims who east bengal settled in assam lot of infiltration their percentage increased so high the local people plus hindus got agitated are you itni muslims in valley a lot of people come from other countries we are getting no jobs we are discriminated so we are suppressed so they started agitating again then muslim free east pakistan that is on 47 to 70 there is lot of infiltration of muslims which came and settled in bangladesh then last one is 1971 war the muslims they when came and they left to bangladesh they don't want to be part of bangladesh they when the war took place the partition of bangladesh took place they left to bangladesh uh, uh, other places and settled down in india they came out of bangladesh so because of this there was heavy heavy Uh, illegal immigrants uh, coming into the assam because of that their uh, resources limited their uh, opportunities are limited their uh, laborers were not given jobs and their resource, they had to starve a lot they got out of discrimination because the illegal immigrants that led to the formation alpha and alpha had a popular public support so this is what is the major crux see the population of muslim those were 77% and into those only be 40% Between 1971, 1991. For example, in Tamil Nadu, if all the workers from Manipur or Northeast are going to come and settle down here, don't you think there will be a problem in some point of time? For after ten years, there is no everywhere there is a Manipuri fellow uh, working in Sugi, Zomato, uh, hotel. Even now you find everywhere you find only white face fellows all neat and clean. And even if he speaks Tamil, we speak in Hindi to him. because we are so addicted to you know uh, speaking to a white colored boy and khana aayega as a boy we speak because but we go to north india they don't speak in uh, they speak in the, uh, but we don't have that uh, i don't know why but still 
if he, the trend continues of unlimited uh, infiltration of laborers and not, not that it is not india but similar flow from tamil nadu to other places also is desirable this is not taking place so what will happen we will have a lot of unemployment our people will lose jobs but our people doesn't want to go to delhi even for civil service they will not go to delhi why because the food is they don't get idli dosa and all so they'll come back again after one month our food is all but if you go to rajendra prasad area or karolbag area you find the, they just have one pav bhaji and go for next class all people can't do that they hardly manage food and food is a major problem in the climate so we people are want to do in delhi but they come back again but i say is whether it's jelly or even karya bati or your rameshwaram or ramnad you can prepare anywhere the this class is required because you require one one mentor to tell you how to go about but preparation is from your side only so you cannot don't say that uh, only delhi can help you what is in delhi is the peer group is very strong not like you for example if we have class like this there the class starts at 3 o'clock at 1 o'clock the entire thing will be full people come at 1 o'clock to occupy the front chairs those who come at 3:30 3 o'clock or lecture have to stand in the near the door hundreds of people are standing here so that is what is the spirit so why these people are so hungry because from bihar your rajasthan your up they get ranks because of their pursuit they pursue focus no procrastination but we are more prone to procrastination just see how procrastination is true for our kids naalik padikalam tomorrow will do day after tomorrow will do we postpone things we don't focus on things um i want to study now oh it looks like raining so it takes some more time i have to go to library no no it looks like uh, there a little bit uh, hot i'll i go after two uh, two, two, two hours oh my uh, scooter is punctured i how can i go is getting late so today class i'll miss i'll attend online classes so we want some excuse to not to do our work that is called procrastination and that is a disease you read a book called dopamine detox it will tell you why we are like this it's a disease and that disease will not allow you to do the job if you want to overcome it then you have to stick to your focus you have to stick to your timing stick stay focused stay no distractions less distraction in phone less distraction in your uh, looking at things which is not required suppose you are stressed have a, a small uh, entertainment a game or something but that shouldn't obsess you the artificial intelligence in facebook and uh, linkedin all these tweeters they got uh, the system in such a way that they don't want your attention to be diverted so that maximum time spent on phone that is money for them for you it is waste of energy that you would understand so this is what is the reason then the, i uh, took this cutting from paper center assam sign peace pact with ulfa faction or uh, yes we are all okay we uh, we will not fight we will not have uh, armed struggle so they uh, took up uh, the cause with uh, the palco is signing with amcha because he agreed to the government as i i am in peace paru was no 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 i will not come with you. he made a uh, terrorist attack immediately after this incident and showed that i am against this assam accord i want uh, more so this is what uh, uh, still it is continuing rajkova is there uh, is present uh, he joined the group and the mha isms are still at the job uh, suspension operations is at work down peace accord of 2023 again that this is 2011 after 2011 this 23 again the peace accord was signed here again the same fellow they gave a lot of money and they gave uh, integrity of assam will be settled they said out of the Mm, 123 assembly seats 97 will be the locals so that was the greatest uh, highlight of the
So here what happens, again you trace back the history, you come back from uh, the World War first, when the Naga people, tribes were used by the Britishers for the World War. They got exposed to the World War countries and they became aware that we should also have a Naga society. They formed a you know, society a club, Naga club, 1938 or so. Then they started uh, um, fighting and the point of uh, independence, they said no, 1947, before we give independence, we want independence from India. We don't want to be part of India. That was one more uh, Palco of not Palco of Allah, other uh, Peru, Peru's, what is the name? Um, uh, Nagaland uh, Hills, 2014, uh, then uh, Parvez, what is the name? I forget it. Naga Club was formed in 46. And they also found Naga National Council to fight. This was the first uh, official body to fight what? We want a separate country. So here you find uh, there's a um, nine point agreement that after 10 years you give freedom. 10 years, please be with us. That was the agreement between the governor, uh, that time governor, and the Parvez. What is his name? Is a very good name he had. Uh, right, I'll tell you. Oh, no, Pizzo. This Pizzo was a very deadly man. He was uh, for total independence of Naga. So he said, I declare myself independent. So in 14th August, he declared Nagaland as a separate country. He wrote to UN also, hey, we are a separate country, we have a separate flag, eh? we don't come under Indian uh, sovereignty. So uh, that was very funny. And here what happened, United Nations also uh, refused to accept because eh, you are the true representation of the Naga people. So your uh, resolution is not accepted. He also gave a, uh, uh, what you call, uh, he conducted a census also. 100% says that we want to have a separate country. He showed the signature. Then they said, you are not the two representatives. Why? Oh, yeah. They were sent out. So this fellow again started fighting. Then uh, again, uh, there was a fight going on, going on. Till 1963, was a, so much of fighting that this fellow was given a separate state at least. So in 1963, what happened? The government said, okay, Bacha, get, uh, you please be, become... Uh, uh, 63 you become a separate uh, state. So they gave him separate state status. Be happy. Then he again, no, no, no. He's so agreed. Are yaar, hai, chalega. This fellow kept quiet. What happened? Then they gave the Shilong called 1975. They say that they have a lot of, uh, uh, they will surrender arms. They will surrender everything. They will accept the sovereignty of the country, which was not accepted by the other two uh, fellows. What they did, Pizzo started becoming like a Palkova, side of the government. So these fellows, well, there's another uh, uh, good gentleman, uh, what is called Moya, Moya and Kaplan, these two are again actors. They said, no, 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 we don't want Nagaland. Uh, we don't want to be accepted the sovereignty of the country. We don't accept the Shilong card. We want Nagal, Nagalim only. So these two separated and they formed what you call the NSCN, the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, IAM and K group. There are two groups. Kaplan group and Moya group, these two. Moya, Moya was like a Palkova, supporting the government. Kaplan was against it. So here again two factions started. So it's interesting, you see, read the story, no? it was very interesting. Then they all uh, go on fighting and fighting. Then uh, at last uh, in uh, 2015, NSE and IM, that is Moya group, signed the agreement with government of India. Fight, bah. no, no more fight. I have lots of uh, fight as well. They found it. Uh, agreement with the Moeva group and this Moeva group uh, had a <coughs> Naga peace accord. They signed this accord, but believe me, till today nobody knows what is this accord. No, nobody find any reference. He says, okay, we are settled, we have we got an understanding, we will not fight, we will accept it. So there are some points uh, agreed upon both the sides, so it is a success. But, uh, this fellow Kaplan said, no, no, no. I will not agree. He started uh, continuing his fight against the government. So this is standstill for Nagaland so far. Uh, then he comes to Mizoram. Mizoram is again a typical country which uh, where you know uh, they started. Uh, you know there was a uh, mortem fi uh, famine in uh, 1959. Every 40 years or 50 years, I think I do not know correctly. You have got a, a famine in uh, Mizoram. What's the mind? A bamboo shoots comes with the flower and because of the rats will increase. The rats increase so high that they eat every, what you call, uh, danium grains. Total famine will grow. Uh, because the akal will 
so is there because of that there was a society called bizur cultural society set up in 1955 to fight the famine because the government was not paying uh, the uh, amount of attention to help the people who were dying because of famine they became the leaders and slowly after the famine also the bizur cultural society bombed the bizur national front so bizur national front was formed by the lal danga he became a later the cm also and this fellow had a tough fight with the army this is the first time in the history of uh, india where they raided uh, the bizo people uh, bizo national front raided a army camp and they killed 22 uh, jawans in a convoy of uh, jeeps you can imagine attacking the army 22 people not even this uh, your uh, kashmiri has not done it that daringly that time so killed a lot of army uh, then the government became uh, the indira gandhi was there i think she was cm she was very furious about this what they did 30 to 35 helicopters took off the uh, night itself and they bombarded misoram as well throughout night they killed so many people and this is the first time the indian air force bombarded his own people and killed our own citizens and first and last time this chief indian uh, defense and this is a very remarkable that forces dropping aerial attack on our people that was a history of mizoram so then second phase of incident like then they got uh, quite then they said the bru repatriation bru is again a group started infiltrating into uh, mizoram they wanted to be taken out mizoram fight it again and there was the agreement made and uh, that was also settled uh, they come to the agreement then comes tirupura tirupura is a quiet country so there were small factions of militancy then uh, not very uh, tiger force is uh, not very significant they are under control and then we got uh, same tirupura people are fighting then we got tiger force and this uh, government has made an agreement recently that they will give the representation in the uh, councils autonomous bodies will be formed so they got uh, somewhat settled the issue is not settled then comes arunachal pradesh arunachal pradesh is a very difficult place and the very uh, fact that arunachal pradesh is the largest of the seven states and it is called 98% of forest and 2% of water and uh, it has got a very strategic significance that china is saying that arunachal pradesh doesn't belong to india it's part of our game no yaar this is our place no? they are fighting in arunachal pradesh finds a place in chinese map whereas india put the achach in, in uh, india's map these people are fighting for a long time and the china india relationship the crux uh, uh, total is not nodal point is arunachal pradesh because here with the problem is very very sensitive how this arunachal pradesh we got what is uh, peculiar is in arunachal pradesh you got this uh, what i told you this kaplan group im group ye ulfa alfa all these fellows are having camp in arunachal pradesh they all have got their headquarters in arunachal pradesh and they quite comfortably operating from there and they are being supported by chinese well. all these militant organizations are being supported by chinese army and lot of weapons ak forces are just like that you can go and buy any weapon you want so uh, freely available and then you have got um, uh, parliamentary committees and pass this nsnk all are engaged there then uh, uh, the presence of ulfa is there see the moist is there see left wing extremism moist are in arunachal pradesh then you have got the chatma refugees are there 33000 rakhi refugees are coming from Uh, different parts of tibet bhutan nepal settled down in arunachal pradesh and that is the reason you know arunachal pradesh has no big infrastructure why because no private investors want to invest in arunachal pradesh don't know when this uh, fellows will take away is highly unstable uh, doesn't know who has ownership who will take away this land so they have not uh, come forward to a lot of private investments so that is why arunachal is still is a type of a very volatile country volatile state then you have got uh, uh, your uh, uh, tamang is a very beautiful place and that is a point of contention between uh, china and india tamang is never for tamang is a uh, 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 i'll tell you about tamang later 
again meghalaya is a small place it is not much of a problem north is the least problem is meghalaya is a beautiful place if you ever have a time to visit please go to meghalaya no not much of a threat a very beautiful place and you can visit uh, see when the time meghalaya can go there are also three four tribes are garo island is there he is fighting for the kasi you have got achiks and uh, dakas so a lot of the small uh, players are there these are the stories to be studied and kept in mind that's all garo land is there so this is all leave it then you got manipur again a major culprit now the major remember hottest insurgent place is manipur why because manipur you have uh, history don't trace history at the present when what happened in 23 may is this that the plain area that's the impal valley of the manipur is uh, have uh, ruled by meti people this meti people are they are called very hindus and muslims they are in the plain uh, impal valley and the meti people are uh, more in number or 50 to 60% are meti people and you have got uh, surrounded by hills this hills are surrounded by kuki zo and uh, one more uh, tribe mizo uh, tribes who lives in the forest uh, uh, mountain areas now the problem is the meti people are so populated that they don't have land and they are all belonging to sc group and all those who are in the forest uh, tribal area are sc group they are all christians these people are all either hindus or they are muslims the problem is the people who are in the plain that is plain valley meti cannot buy land in the hill area because of the fish schedule six schedule provision they have they cannot buy only nst can buy so what happened meti started fighting say that please give us sc status why i want to buy land in hill area so when they started agitating uh, this uh, this people said who oh, our uh, kuki people tribes uh, zo tribe said no please don't give the sc status if you give we will not retaliate why because if we give the sc status they are the assembly uh, majority if they get sc status they will come and occupy our places they will come and occupy our jobs we will be jobless so please do not give our uh, sc status to metis this was a point of contention and this grew and um, unfortunately the meti uh, cm was a bjp supporter what he did he went and uh, one chandrapur uh, uh, village he went and demolished the church and all other encroachments saying that this are all uh, government encroach land and they became violent as a result one there was a big rally going on in the meti in may 3 or so all the mountain tribes came down had a big fight and in that violence more than 400 people were killed and the fight continued after that now anybody serving inside meti to that area will be killed it's like india pakistan now so uh, ferocious uh, fighting is going on and total lawlessness the government is not able to do anything with it because of this this issue now meti has come with one more uh, uh, proposal you cancel their sc status the kuki tribe should not get their sc status you also cancel their sc status so this fight is going on no solution is the government government is just sitting on that but you please uh, understand this story so that you know how it started you know, where it started and what is the current situation have a full grasp if you want, i want to talk about uh, manipur it will take another 7 uh, hours let us not go to into the details i am just trying to brush up mm, then we have got uh, uh, manipur i told you then you have got your uh, see so many incidents have taken so to start explaining it will take time then so many uh, incidents of accidents and the uh, then you got article 342 you have to when you study the manipur you have to remember the article 342 why because the problem started the high court of manipur uh, they gave a uh, direction that the government should consider send the proposal to the uh, state government should send the proposal to tribal affairs ministry for including the meti into sc community that was a wrong move and the court gave a direction they started objecting now how a particular community can be made st is this is 342 for any state 
first the government has to send a proposal tribal affairs ministry has to approve it it has to go to the registrar general registrar general has to give national commission of tribes social schedule tribe consisting of all tribes then cabinet has to approve it then president has to vote only if this procedure is followed a person or a community or a state or a or a place can be declared as scheduled tribe so this process was started in uh, manipur the clashes began there so this is to remember the article 342 is very important then uh, this is about border issues now coming to myanmar the all for these problems in north east the main culprit is myanmar myanmar is ruled by whom by arakan army these fellows are got one army for 9 years myanmar has been having a uh, civil war you have got a uh, people defense force uh, then you have got your arakan army you have got organized uh, uh, gang organized uh, uh, people who are fighting against arakan army so this army is not trying so uh, ferociously they are have lawlessness lot of people from myanmar are coming back to uh, uh, mizoram they are settling on mizoram that's the problem secondly all those militant activity in the, in the, the northeast are going in uh, getting arms and drugs from myanmar and thirdly the free movement regime that is one particular big mistake they have done is in 2018 they made this free movement regime that uh, from this place 16 kilometers inside uh, myanmar you can go from that place 16 kilometers you can, go. You can travel for 16 kilometers and stay there for 12 days or 16 days with exam permit it's allowed there's no bargain no fancy and because of this free permit region lot of infiltration of terrorist militancy and drugs and weapons have come inside uh, india now the government got uh, awakened they said no we want to cancel this fmr we don't want free military region we don't we want to close free permit they have to have the visa to come inside we'll close that uh, we'll cancel this fmr provision this was the government stand but the mizoram and the fellow another fellow nagaland did not agree to this they said no our relatives are there please don't cancel this manipur said please cancel it so manipur is for fmr cancellation but here our two people are not for that and moreover government come with one more suggestion to build up a wall in myanmar because that is one uh, deterrent act to prevent people from uh, illegal immigrants illegal weapons to come inside the country the war uh, 1446 kilometers from has to be walled for this also they say uh, resistance to the mizoram and nagaland people so still the government has not come up with has come with the proposal the work has not started though we have got a bangladesh 4000 kilometers of fencing has been done similar fencing is required to be done in uh, myanmar uh, india bought also so this is uh, because of this reason because of the uh, multi faceted problems occurring in this area indian government adopted a look east act is policy look east is trying to look at the problems and trying to do internal administration act is policy means trying to take the neighbors develop with them have agreement have some pro, uh, cooperation with them develop the area develop them also so that we have a healthy relationship with them so you can expect questions on act is policies what is the government's role on that because very big topic you please prepare a note on that and keep it ready so that you can uh, find some kind of uh, questions from active policy so this is one why fmr was reconsidered drugs uh, illegal migrants the requirements for this reason fmr has to be reconsidered was the uh, reason given now now this visual uh, nagar operates the fmr ethnic conflict right this is the, <laughs> this is the border how the uh, stone is that that nothing like a, uh, myanmar and india has got a big wall Holy stone! The cross here will become Myanmar. The cross here will be India. That's all. So to show you that this is how it functions. How can you expect that there will be no infiltration? Any dog and cattle can go this side and come this side also. So this is the state of affairs. And now steps taken by government. Uh, Article two forty four six. These are all theory. Nothing more to explain. Dam cut, infrastructure put up, provisions given, autonomous bodies put up, loan cut up. All the other things are solved. The same thing is repeated here also. Please, uh, the Northeast uh, uh, Council form, man, 
um, then they formed what you call donor department of northeastern region to help their uh, place these are all the what you call uh, rehabilitation measures taken by the government is found you can find in any book and nothing needs to be explained you can just uh, read it mug it up or keep it in mind uh, point by point you can write when is required what steps the government has taken all questions you will ask what steps have been taken to cover the ketro edha ketra nu kapam so you should remember what uh, government steps have taken to counter this problem so you can add this this is also now the uh, expenditure uh, government money all this thing lot of money siphon day all the raw money is being flowing how much of money is being flowing into north east don't know so much of money to maintain this uh, the seven states then you have got your uh, look is an act uh, policy i told you please prepare a note on this any book will give you details on this and then fifth schedule sixth schedule you should know these two schedules are very important because fifth schedule consists of these uh, states provisions of this state westy uh, is covered in fifth schedule sixth schedule is only covering the assam meghalaya tripura mizoram where they have got autonomy autonomy council autonomy uh, governance is ensured the sixth schedule of for these uh, states because of the tribal prevalence then now we come to china north is last point i think uh, sorry so here you find the china north is got a very interesting we have got tibet there we have got uh, bhutan here arunachal pradesh situated here down to the myanmar this is the actual shape of uh, the location of arunachal pradesh is a strategic location now this you have taken now you see tawang is uh, very important here you see we have got three sectors three sectors between china and india one is we have got the western sector where we have got ladakh in the other side we have got akshay chin in the chinese side but india claims about the yellow this is our region and this was the point of contention in the 1962 war so this is one then in the central sector we have got uttarakhand and himachal pradesh our side tibet on the other side okay china apakon idu na prade pukotla idu therinu so uttarakhand and himachal as a border with uh, tibet and then down the line you find you come to the eastern side we have got arunachal pradesh and you have got the mekmohan line this mekmohan line is very important remember this and this map is very important there you got a uh, the for the province of zintang of the china then here you see uh, what happened mekmohan line uh, how, there was a shimla agreement signed between britishers chinese and tibet tibet was a independent country when tibet was independent it was having some problem with britishers the britishers sent his army to tibet the entire uh, tibet was occupied uh, during the second, uh, second world war so uh, tibet was not able to fight uh, british so they said okay maybe i want to have a pass to uh, china and other places for trading purpose so give me some land i want some part of the uh, passage to other places this is what britishers said then they made an agreement in that agreement our uh, macmohan secretary uh, signed an agreement with china tibet and india uh, that was in 1914 i think they formed the macmohan line and that time tawang was given to india britishers so britishers took control of tawang and uh, in 1950 when the tibet lost its independence it got uh, uh, it was not an independent country it became an autonomous region of part of the chinese republic so China, tibet was under the control of china when it became uh, control of china china said we will not oblige the macmohan line we don't agree the macmohan line hence tawang means uh, belongs to our region that was a claim for uh, chinese people so we have not left the tawang so far and it is highly strategic we cannot afford to give tawang for strategic reasons now we have myanmar once is uh, once 1040 uh, this is okay mm, myanmar based problems are you have please uh, study about the rohingya muslims in my when you discuss about see, some slides are jumbled uh, the rohingya muslims from rakhine district it is from myanmar these people had a problem with the buddhist of myanmar and they grew to around crores of I mean, more than one crore of rohingya muslims were thrown out of exile sent on exile from myanmar all these people came to bangladesh india and other places and india they settled 
more than uh, population of 15 lakhs uh, Rohingyas will have come. And these Rohingya Muslims are supported by Lashkar e Taiba and uh, other ISI group, and they've been exploited and they've been used for fighting against terrorist action against the Buddhists. The, the, the 2013 uh, blast in Gaya was planned by the Rohingya Muslims. So it is against the Buddhists. So this is the greatest problem for India, in, uh, the handling of the Rohingya Muslims. And it is still a problem. Last month also there was a talks on giving uh, status of citizenship. The government has not agreed so far. So uh, then the Golden Triangle, as I told you, heavy infrastructure, uh, cheap people. I told civil war in Myanmar. A lot of people are coming into Mizoram area. Now this is one more thing why China wants Taiwan. China says, China says this monastery of Lhasa Monastery is the biggest monastery for Buddhist people. And here you have got a uh, Tawang monastery is again, these two are twin ministries. Uh, both are related to each other and they are more connected to each other culturally and also religiously. So what the, China, the government says, Tibet is our country, Laos is our monastery. So this also should be part of our country. That is one reason why Tawang should be with China. That is their main contention. So we don't want to lose our monastery. These two are twin ministry. It has to come under the Tibet control indirectly with China. This is one reason why China wants Taiwan. And you see here, uh, this uh, Tibetan government exile, lot of people living in this area of Tibet, uh, the Arunachal Pradesh, they are all uh, belonging to different tribes. These tribes are very friendly to India. So they feel that if these tribes and part of them become friendly, they may fight against China. So they don't want Taiwan to be in the hands of India. That's one more reason. And third reason is, we have got this Doklam. Doklam is uh, again a point where there was a fight in 2017. They encroached upon this area. They, are, they, are, they come across this, they can come to the uh, uh, chicken corridor. And uh, Bhutan, this is Bhutan. This Bhutan, if they try to cover this area, have a control over this area, they can easily infiltrate into India. And Bhutan, they can also have control. So that is the reason why we don't want the Buklan, the Doklan area where there was a fight. It, it, it was a Bhutan area. There's a green pastures. But Bhutan asked India, Are this fellow is coming and uh, putting camp here, please help us. So Indian army went there and drew away the forces from the uh, Doklan area. That was one uh, encounter, uh, fight which took place to help Bhutan. And secondly, you, have, you got mainland China. If you take this Tawang, is the nearest point to China. So if India want to fire an ICB missile, intercontinental blasting missiles, air attack they want to reduce, then the nearest point from there we can launch our missiles. That is why China feels if you have control of Tawang, they will be able to start, it will be safer. So they don't want India to use a nuclear missile. If they want to use a nuclear missile or any other ICB missiles, they'll use it from Tawang only. So they want India not to have this area. So that is the reason why there is a fighting for the mainland China. Then here also see air defense system. Uh, whatever air attacks come from China, uh, they can have a defense at Tawang. So again, it is a strategic point where they wanted to um, have control of Tawang. Then here also you see, uh, from this area, uh, they, if they enter, they, in Tawang, if they enter, they come down this area, they can come to the Siliguri corridor. So, entering of India by breaking Tawa, the only route from which they can come into India. So, they, if you, they want to have an invasion or having the trips to India, Tawang route is the best route where Dalai Lama also came through this route also. So, this is the route where they want to take. Moreover, Tawang will also give them free access to Brahmaputra. So, the river also will come, uh, come out of their control at, up to this point. Now that it is not already into their control, see here I tell you, this is one uh, strategy followed by China. What they do, this uh, uh, Zangpo, Zangpo is a river, which when it comes to India, it becomes a Brahmaputra. Now what they are doing, they are putting almost seven or eight dams in that river. So it is in the height. So eight dams they are put to control the water supply to India. So all the northeast region, Brahmaputra is a major river. Now when they put the dams, what will happen, two things can happen. When there is a flood, what they will do, they will open the shutters of all the seven dams. 
the entire northeast will be washed out. It can be used as a weapon. Or if they stop the total water supply, then the entire area will be in the famine because that's the only water line available to the northeast. So that is why this strategy of uh, Chinese dams is one strategy against India to keep us under control. Not that China wants to capture India and have a, they want to uh, use these resources as best as possible to, uh, to expand their marketing, expand their uh, hold in different areas like Tibet, not to uh, govern this place. That is one reason. And now you find uh, one more thing is you find in 1962 war, this uh, India was claiming that sector. Is a, there's a two points where it took place. One is Tawang and Achaising sector. These two places where there we lost, in fact, but still uh, India was uh, still claiming that 10,000 square kilometers still under China. Here they say, okay, I will give you Tawang. Uh, you give us Tawang, I will give you Chinchang. That is again one uh, proposal came by China. India did not agree for that. So here also we find, mm. this is again uh, Tawang, there is the entry into Brahmaputra Valley. <clears throat> then here also we find, um, mm, again, uh, the, uh, the, they got uh, access to these places. Then you got your uh, uh, trade route. China has got the world's largest manufacturing. They, actually, now it is going from here. It is traveling through this to the uh, European countries and Western market. But now they have what? They, they have one more uh, route. That is, this, uh, mm, they want to cut across Myanmar. There they are making a route here. Now, again, we had a pact with uh, the, uh, the Kaladan uh, model, uh, multi, uh, multi uh, transport model project where road was constructed in Kaladan. A big project where uh, it starts from uh, Myanmar, it goes through uh, up to the sea so that uh, the, even the chicken corridor is blocked. We can travel through sea, um, we can connect the northeast to the sea. That route was uh, agreed upon 2008. But now the government, which is now in power, the Arakan army, which is in hold of the uh, Felpa region, they are not cooperating because they are in favor of China. So this project, which has been uh, there for more than 18 to 20 years, is almost completion, is being stuck by the Chinese intervention. 